it's been a while since I last uploaded some Wicross content, and a good part of that is because I just haven't been using particularly interesting decks that I felt the need to post a list for. The White Black VTubers deck has largely fallen off in power level and I've been using it a lot less and kind of struggling to keep it relevant. I've also been using a Cosmos list that, while it's kind of interesting, isn't quite at the place I'd like it to be in order to post a proper video about it. And through most of the actual tournaments I've been attending, I've just been using a Blue-Red Mautica list that's a fairly standard discard tempo build. So with all of that in mind, I haven't really had anything super interesting that I've felt the need to post for, but the most recent deck I've been experimenting with does kind of meet that threshold. It's a pretty interesting list, and that list is Angel Aggro. Now, when you think of an Angel deck, an aggressive strategy is probably not the first thing on your mind, but there is a few different cards pulling you in that direction. So, to start off with, let's take a look at the cards that are really going to be pulling you into an Angel strategy. The poster child for an Angel strategy is really Liwat. This is a powerful level 3 Signy that can draw cards, enter charge, remove low level Signy, or acts as an enter sync to allow you to remove much more powerful Signy. It's a veritable Swiss army knife of a Signy that only works in Angel tribal decks. However, while this card is extremely impressive and very efficient at what it does, it's not quite strong enough on its own to really pull you into Angel Tribal, so you're obviously going to need a little bit more than that. The next thing that's going to be pulling you to Angel Tribal, though, is fortunately a fairly deep card pool of cards with Life Burst. There are a lot of powerful options here, ranging from Exia and Art Gain as powerful defensive options at level 3, all the way down to Haniel at level 1 that provides a great amount of card filtering. All these cards are cards that you're perfectly happy to play in a normal deck, so the fact that they are all coincidentally angels is really nice here, and the fact that they all have life burst is going to make your deck building a lot easier. Usually, filling in the last few slots of your deck is going to be the most difficult when you're trying to get up to that 20 life burst threshold. There's just a lot more powerful, impactful cards without life burst than there are with life burst. However, fortunately, because Angels has a ton of powerful cards with life burst, it makes deck building much easier on that front. Now, the card that really pulled me into this strategy in the first place was Hamera, Crimson Angel, which is a level 1 that, if you have two angels in play, including itself, it impersonates Romail and allows you to pay one enter to remove an opposing Signy with 3,000 or less power. However, if you have three angel Signy in play, including itself, it actually impersonates Lancelot, removing 5,000 or less power for one enter. Now, unlike those two cards, you do actually have to use red enter rather than colorless. However, the fact that you're able to impersonate Lancelot on a level 1 is a really, really powerful effect, and it's uniquely available to angel-exclusive strategies, which is the number one reason why I really, really wanted to try this deck. If Hamera was the card pulling me to try this deck in the first place, the card that really cemented my desire to play this deck was Gaia. This is a deceptive card. You look at it and it looks like it's doing a lot of nice things, but none of them really stand out. At the start of your combat, if you have three angels, you enter charge one. At the end of your turn, if you have an angel thing in your enter zone, you can add one to your hand. And also at the end of your turn, you can pay two to put an angel signy from your enter zone into play. All these abilities sound nice, but none of them really jump out, and I initially underestimated this card until I started doing a lot more testing, when I realized that this card was absolutely obnoxious to play against. While it sits there on its own, it does build a small amount of resources every turn, principally with its Ener Charging ability, although being able to get Signy out of your Ener Zone as well is also very nice. However, it also makes Assist Lurig timing for the opponent an absolute nightmare. Any of the assist of the rigs that remove one of your Signy is going to prevent a bit of a quandary for the opponent. They can remove Gaia, and in which case they leave themselves with an open lane to attack through next turn, but if Gaia is sitting beside a closed lane, then if they target the open lane to get rid of that and save themselves the damage, then they're stuck facing down potentially something as annoying as an Exia being pulled out of trash at end of turn. And even if you're not pulling out Exias or other powerful Angel Signy to block that lane, you're at least filling that lane back in, denying them that counterattack opportunity. 
It's a seriously annoying effect in the fact that it provides other advantages even when it's not, making assist math a nightmare for the opponent, means that it's a frustrating card to play against, and is one of my favorite reasons to play Angels. So if those are the core cards that are going to be pulling you into an Angel strategy, how do we organize that into a cohesive strategy? We've obviously got our colors pretty much all locked in, we've got red, white, and green, but what kind of a strategy are we going to be crafting around that for our Larig deck? To start with, our central Larig is going to be Tama. Tama is a fantastic card that gives you a nice pile of cards when it hits level 3, and also allows you to sink in to enter every turn in order to get an extra Larig attack. It's very powerful and very versatile, and there's a reason you see it in so many decks. This deck was originally built around Card Jockey, principally because the deck was already running Art Gain and Haniel. While team-based strategies have fallen off a lot in the metagame, I did like the idea of multiple Larig attacks, and fortunately, it just so happened that Tama was the best way to keep doing that, and it was also just an extremely powerful option. It fit into the deck strategy extremely well. One thing that did carry over from the Card Jockey days is DJ Lovett. DJ Lovett's Scratch X2 gives one of your Signy Double Crush, which allows you to present far more pressure at the start of the game than almost any other strategy out there. Helping out with that is DJ Lovett Crossfade. Now, while as a defensive option, this is not the most impactful card. It simply vanishes an opposing Signy for 2 enter, which is not top of the line for efficiency and not top of the line for defense or offense. However, if you sink an additional 4 enter into it, it crushes one of your opponent's life cloths. We'll get into why this is a really good effect for this deck a little bit further on, but to help us make sure we have enough Enter to activate those effects, we're running Ott. Ott Charge Enter charges 2, and Ott Eject allows you to put in 3 Enter to stop 2 Signy attacks. Now, in this slot, Bang is likely slightly better. However, there's a very good reason I have for running Ott here, and I mean, just look at it. That's, that's fantastic. Rounding out the rest of our Larig deck is Kyuriri Kyuririra, which is a rather odd choice, but it is a really important inclusion here, especially considering how DJ Lovett tends to burn through a lot of your resources in the early game. This is just going to give you an extra card and an extra enter at the early game with no real fuss. The final piece is Entwined Supremacy, which basically gives your Larig an extra life cloth crush on its attack. All these cards taken together, plus the main angels that we're looking to play, leads us into a strategy that prioritizes early damage on the field, with Scratch X2 and Hemera leading the way, followed up by a strategy where we create an annoyingly powerful defensive wall at level 3 while we get in with direct damage, like Crossfade and Entwined Supremacy, and Larig attacks from Tama. To round out the rest of the deck, we have the obligatory four servants, which we might as well just get out of the way right now. Then we've got the rest of the angels. None of these are really strong enough to be pulling you into angels on their own, but a lot of them are nice options. You've got Sukuna Bikona, which is a really nice card that either enter charges you one. However, it pulls any angel out of your trash for the enter charge, which gives you a fair amount of selection as to what color you get. Now, one of the weaknesses of this deck is that it does have a lot of different color requirements, so the fact that this card lets you pull out whatever color you want is really nice. The fact that it also has the ability to pull an angel out of your enter zone into your hand is just a nice bonus. Next up is Isis, which is not fantastic, but it is another powerful life burst effect that does give the deck a nice bit of bonus consistency. It looks at the top three cards of your deck, lets you add an angel to your hand, and then if you do so, you discard one card from your hand. So this isn't strictly card advantage, it's just a little bit of dig to make the deck a little more consistent. And when you're trying to apply early pressure, using Hemera specifically, and also the next card on the list, Iris, this helps you make sure that those early damage dealers are going to be coming into your hand when you need them. As mentioned, the next card is Iris, Crimson Angel. And when this one attacks, if you have three angels of different names on your field, you can discard one angel from your hand in order to vanish an opposing Signy with 8,000 or less power. Now, removing an opposing Signy on attack with 8,000 or less power without spending any enter is a fantastic effect, but this card is definitely not as powerful as it may seem at first glance looking at all of those plus sides. 
Most importantly, you need three Signy in play in order to pull this off. So if your opponent grows one of their assists and clears one of your Signy off the field, then this card cannot activate its ability. Especially during early aggro rushes, this is actually a surprisingly relevant downside, and it takes what could be a two lane swing down to a zero lane swing with a single pinpoint piece of removal like Machina Smash or similar. That being said, especially later on in the game as your opponent starts to run out of their assist options, this can become a really annoying card, especially because that 8000 power threshold is really relevant even into the later stages of the game. Finally, the rest of the slots in this deck are largely included just to fill out your color requirements. You have Kagutsuchi, which is a level 3, which you most people likely haven't seen since the early starter deck days. However, it is a solid card with a solid life burst and some effects that are nice to have even if you don't make use of them all that much. Most importantly though, it is a red angel signy and we like those. On that similar note, we have Sita Crimson Angel, which is also a red angel signy with life burst. And again, for this deck, we like those. Finally, rounding out our signy lineup, we have Kamapua, which lets you trash to enter on attack to enter charge three. This is a really nice source of additional enter and it triggers fairly reliably. Unfortunately, the deck is only running one of them because it's far more important to have a few more white symbols for our enter zone. So we're running Aglaia instead of more Kamapua. Aglaia is very similar, except you have to discard two angels from hand in order to draw three cards. Now, while this is really nice to give yourself a little bit of card advantage, and most importantly, to dig for servants when you need them, it's much less reliable than Kamapua. You're much less likely to have two angels in hand that you're okay with discarding than you are to have two angels in your enter zone that you're okay with discarding. However, again, as mentioned, it has a white symbol, so it gets the nod at three copies. The last spots in the deck are three spells. You have Eternal Influence for removal, Miracle Draw for card draw and filtering, and both of those are just making use of your Exceed slots. Finally, you have Edenify at one copy, and while I can't count the number of games where this has flipped as my first life cloth and had absolutely nothing to vanish since it only vanishes two or more on its life burst effect, it is a nice effect to have access to, particularly since it can vanish opposing Signy with 8000 or more power. Often this deck will struggle in the late game to open up lanes because most of its removal is targeted towards lower power Signy. That's why it relies so much on Lurig damage to finish off the game. Edenify is a nice option to fall back on to help you open up a lane in those late game scenarios or even remove a problematic Signy such as a Phalaris that has been equipped with one of Mel's accessories to make it a much more potent threat that's almost impossible to remove for, with the deck through more conventional means. And overall, that is the deck. Its strategy is to apply a ton of early pressure with Scratch X2 and Hemera in the early game before transitioning into a late game where you create a powerful defensive wall and continue to chip in with Lorig damage and direct damage effects. Overall, this deck has functioned surprisingly well, and for a tribal deck, it's definitely something that I've not really seen anything remotely similar to. One of the big weaknesses of Angels is that they have support in every color, so it's somewhat difficult to pull all of that together into a single cohesive plan. However, this deck and its Lorig configuration seems to have more or less done that, and I'm very happy with it. I'm going to continue playing with this deck for quite a while longer. If you've been running any Wacross decks that are a bit off the beaten path, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. And until next time, have a fantastic day, and may you always flip a life burst.